Hello everyone, continuing the series of weekly contest 286, here comes the first question in the list. Find the difference of two arrays. Here in this question we are given two arrays and we need to return the answer that has two elements in it. The first element of the answer should have all the distinct integers that are present in nums1 which are not part of nums2. ANS at the second element should be all the distinct integers that are part of nums2 which are not, which are not present in nums1. And the order should not be preserved. This is another note that the question specified. Here they have provided us with an example as well as I'll be walking you through this example as well as the algorithm to go about it by the presentation. So let's quickly hop on to it. I'll be solving this question using two approaches. So do watch it till the end. Find the difference of two arrays lead code 2215. It's an easy level question on lead code and I totally feel the same. So let's take the same example as slightly updated data but the answer will remain the same. So let's get started. Uh, here we have given nums1 as 1233 3 and nums2 as 2246. Uh, what we need to identify in the first place, all those elements that are part of nums1 which are not present in nums2. So what are those elements? I can see two common in both of them. As a result of which, the first element of our answer will contain only two attributes 1 and 3 because 1 and 3 are not present in nums2 and are present in nums1. Now comes the question, how can we identify this up? So first and the foremost thing that you should do is to transform this input into set so as to remove duplications. So once you transform this array into set, what will be the updated values? We'll have only three values in it, one, two and three. So this represents set one and this represents set two. Now we have two, four and six in it. Now what we should do, we should iterate over each element of this set one and check whether that element is part of set 2 or not. So the first element that we see is 1. Is 1 part of set 2? No, it is not part of set 2. As a result of which, in the first element of our answer, 1 will be added. So 1 gets added. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is 2. Now we should check whether 2 is part of second set or not. It is part of second step. That means we have to skip it up. Next going ahead, we see 3. We need to check whether 3 is part of the set, it is not part of the set as a result of which it becomes part of our answer. We have successfully built our first element answer which is 1 3 in sync with our expectation. Now let's go for the other iteration where we will check what all elements are present in set 2 which are not part of set 1. So the first element that we see is 2. Is 2 part of set 1? Yes it is. As a result of it, it will not be part of our answer. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is 4. Is 4 part of set 1? It is not part of set 1. It will be part of our answer. Next we see is 6. Will Is 6 part of set 2? 1. It is not part of set 1. As a result of which it will be part of our answer. And we have successfully built uh, the answer which has two elements. The first one is 1, 3 and the second one is 4, 6 which is in sync with our expectation. So far so good. Now comes the question. Can we solve it in another interesting way? The answer is yes. Instead of creating sets, what we can do, we can use frequency maps or frequency arrays. So let's take the same example that we just talked about and instead of creating set, what we will create, we will create frequency maps or frequency array. So uh, in the question it was specified that the elements live in the range of minus 1000 till plus 1000. So I will use this property to actually build my frequency map of size 2000 in nature and in order to uh, take care of negative numbers, I'll simply add 1000 while iterating over my nums array. So let's get started. The first element that we see is 1. So 1 plus 1000 gives me 1001. So I'll simply go and update the frequency at 1001 index and it will be updated to 1. And by default it was 0 initially. Next we see is 2 and as a result of which I'll add 1000 to it. I'll get to uh, 1 0, 0 2 and I'll update its frequency to 1. Next we see is 3. So I'll update the frequency of 1003 to 1 and then we see another 3, I'll update it to 2. So we have the elements as all are 0 starting from 0 up till 2000 and there are only 3 elements where the frequency happens to be greater than or equal to 1 which is 1001, 1002, 1003. Now I'll do a similar kind of thing for the second array as well. So here I'll be updating the frequency of 1002 because here the element is 2 to 2 it will be updated because we have two twos here next we'll have 1 at 1004 
next we'll have one at one zero zero six so again we have built that frequency map now what will i do it's really simple i need to check what all elements happen to be part of nums one which are not part of nums two so we can simply iterate over them and check what which element do we see we see one zero zero one is what is the frequency of one zero zero one in the second frequency map it happens to be zero as a result of which this element will become part of my answer set so i'll simply create my array answer array and the element that we see is one zero zero one i will subtract thousand from it and then i'll add it to my answer next we see is one zero zero two so is one zero 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 two Uh, present in nums two, we can simply extract this information from the frequency map. The frequency is greater than zero. As a result of which, we'll have to skip this out. Next, we see is one zero zero three. What is the frequency of one zero zero three in the second frequency map? It is zero. As a result of which, this will become part of my answer. And one zero zero three minus thousand gives me three, and this becomes one comma three, which is in sync with our expectation. Now you can yourself by trade through second input array. and check what all elements are not part of nums1 and appropriately build 4 comma 6 as your answer element uh, to for concluded further let's quickly walk through the coding section and i'll be walking you through both these approaches so let's get started so let's go step by step in the first solution i have used sets i created two sets set1 and set2 i added all the elements of nums1 and set1 all the elements of num2 and set2 moving ahead i have created two lists el1 and el2 i check whether the any element uh, of set 1 happens to be not present of part of set 2 if it is not then i add it to my el1 list otherwise on very similar lines i i iterate over all the elements of set 2 i check whether those are part of set 1 or not if they are not then i add it to my el2 list and in the end i finally return arrays as list el1 comma el2 so let's try this up and then we will move on to the frequency based approach let me just comment this up and let's shoot for it accept it now let's go for the other approach the frequency based one and here i have created two arrays one for uh, creating the frequency map for element 1 other one for element 2 and here i have done that moving ahead i create the first element or el1 i check i iterate over all elements of nums1 i check what is the frequency of that element in el2 frequency map if it is equal to 0 that means i should add it to my result also there is a small corner case that element should not be present in the first list that we have built so far this will take care of duplication you can use set here as well but uh, that will also improve the time complexity as you don't have to explicitly take care of the statement on similar lines i have done it for the second element element as well and in the end i simply return my answer building my first using my first element and my second element so let's submit this to accepted this brings me to the end of today's session i hope you enjoyed it if you did please don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel thanks for viewing it have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates from coding decoded i'm solving rest of the questions of the weekly contest thank you